endpoint. Uh, it has the ability to dial into a conference or you can conversely have the ability to dial into it. Either way, doesn't matter. It uh, allows you to capture uh, conferences and then make them available either through the PRMM or one of the other uh, video uh, serving capabilities that are out there. Uh, it does help you leverage that investment on this video conferencing equipment that you've purchased. In this case, I'm on an HDX 9000, uh, beautiful camera, beautiful audio, uh, and it's just sitting there at this point in time not being used, so I decided to use it for a recording, and it works very nicely for that. Uh, the recordings are, are convenient because they're centrally managed and located. You don't have to go running around trying to figure out where they all are, uh, getting them from the individual endpoints if, if they happen to record them locally. Uh, now I'm able to record them all in one central uh, location using the RSS 4000. I can record all the way up to 1080p. Uh, it's one of the few devices out there today that are capable of doing that. It also has the ability to do streaming. Uh, both multi-point, I'm sorry, multicast and unicast directly from the box, and we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. You also have full security capabilities. Not only do we have the ability to encrypt the actual video itself, which could be important for some medical environments or pot potentially financial environments, but we also have the ability to control access through Active Directory uh, by registering ourselves with an Active Directory server or an LDAP. We can uh, let it control who's allowed to get in and look at videos. Those videos can be tagged to individual users and or groups and so only people with authorization can see those videos. And you can also take it to another level and put a pin code to protect the video that much more. Here's a general layout of how things uh, are fitting. So I have an RSS, uh, in this case, an RSS uh, 4000 there in the middle. I have a couple endpoints there on the top. They may be telepresence systems. They may be immersive telepresence, the large RPX, OTX type rooms. It could be CMA desktop or M100 or, or even uh, using like our Apple um, solution, the uh, Real Presence Mobile that's available on uh, the iPad and the, the 4S and, and newer uh, Apple products. Uh, <clears throat> or from any of our video systems. As you can see there uh, in the middle, it can record up to uh, uh, 1080p and then serve it out uh, on demand or streamed to the uh, uh, people on the right-hand side. There are several recording modes, and there are two of them listed here. One's a self mode, and that's what I'm using right now. The other would be having uh, the video recorder as one of the endpoints in a conference. Now, some people who have developed systems like this, uh, they don't hide themselves. So that video recorder actually shows up in one of the squares in the video call. We actually tell the bridge to not record the video from the the uh, uh, recorder because there's nothing really good about it. There's nothing important about it. Uh, so it doesn't tie up space on the screen. There's actually a third recording method where I can actually record a point-to-point -point call without having to have a separate bridge. That's done by the two endpoints dialing into the RSS 4000 and then meeting in the middle uh, in what we call a recording room. And that works very nicely. Some of the uh, competitive differentiators for the RSS, we should be fully compatible with all the standards-based telepresence systems that are out there today, uh, the polycoms, the, the, some of the, the life-size units that have been brought out, and there's some other, other vendors using standards-based. Realize there are a group out there that are not standards-based, and of course, uh, we'd struggle trying to com connect and record from them. Uh, solution is integration. Uh, being able to integrate it with our HDX, our, our uh, RMX bridge, uh, our uh, real presence media management tools. Um, now there are other tools out there that we also uh, connect with and that's our DMA. It has the ability to actually start a recording if you want to. And of course we have the ability to record all the way up to 1080p. There are some other vendors out there, but we, uh, we were the first ones to hit the street with it. Recording is very easy to set up. I actually can take my 
uh, remote control. If I have the older style, which is on the left, I can use firing camera control. If I have the newer style, the HDX, on the right-hand side, I can actually use the VCR buttons that are at the bottom of the remote control. Just by pressing the red button, if I've told the conference I will use uh, recording, it will actually start the recording. Now there on the bottom of the, the screen, it talks about uh, I can stream up to 15 concurrent streams coming out of the uh, um, RSS. 4,000 at this time. I can also record content, and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Let's see, I'm on the left side, so my content's over there. Okay, so you can see my, my content over there. And that's also called H239. Um, that's the standards name for it. Polycom calls it contents. Uh, other vendors call it other things. Hamburg, uh, Cisco, they happen to call it uh, Duo Video. Uh, and it, when they're set in standards mode, we can certainly record it off the RSS 4000. Uh, now, when we record, we record in several layouts and uh, forms, and that's what some of that uh, on that screen shows you. Uh, I can record at uh, 2 meg, but I can do a secondary recording simultaneously at 512, and then I can also have an MPEG-4 resolution, can go all the way up to 720p. And that's probably what you're seeing this recording from, is the, those, uh, uh, the MPEG-4 recordings that I made of this uh, presentation. One of the things we can do inside RSS is uh, set templates up so that we can set parameters that many people can use. Uh, I'm using my own custom template uh, set up literally in minutes but I wanted specifically 720p recording capability on a 2 meg call. And so I set those parameters up uh, rather than messing up with anybody else's uh, template that might be out there. What would happen is typically you'd have an operator administrator set up your template to your requirements. And at that point in time, uh, any call you made would use that template. Now, some of the media things that we support, uh, two uh, 323 and two. 239. Uh, we support 261, 263, and 264 video uh, uh, resolutions all the way up to 1080p, uh, multiple audio formats. Now, audio formats, could this be used to record an audio conference? Absolutely. Audio conference is the same as a video conference, except the video conference has video. They're both audio conferences. So yes, we can absolutely record a, an audio conference. Now, one warning about RSS and all the recorders that are out there in the industry today, you need to check with your local laws to see what the limitations are on recording and who has to be notified. RSS 4000 has an option to present an icon on the recorded media so that there's a little record button that shows up in the screen so that people know that they're actually being recorded. Some states that is required, so you need to check with your local laws. Uh, some of the capacity capabilities on the RSS 4000 are actually quite good. Uh, 700 hours at uh, 768 call, uh, 768 KB. And realize that the RSS 4000 also supports high profile, which means 768, I can do a 720p HD call. Okay? I can record up to 15 concurrent calls or streams. Um, and we actually buy or sell the the RSS in three, three flavors, small, medium, and large. The small handles uh, 15 call, or five calls, excuse me. The medium handles 10 calls, and the large unit handles 15 simultaneous calls. Now, web streaming wise, with the right licensing, I can stream up to 200 concurrent unicast streams. Now, if those were a meg each, that's 200 mega bandwidth. That can be a lot of bandwidth depending on your environment. So be careful about that with a lot of people calling in and doing uh, video on demand. It's very simple, very powerful. And if you look at the uh, what we call the dashboard, which is this black area on the screen, uh, RSS, DMA, CMA, all have very, very similar look and feel. So it's becoming a, a design criteria for Polycom and all their infrastructure products.
Well, let's look at some of the options we have on recording. Uh, some of the custom recordings, uh, depending on what VRR, virtual recording room, you dial into, now a war, virtual recording room ties itself to a template, okay? And so the virtual recording room will use what other parameters that the uh, template might have specified. So in this example, I have someone dialing in on 5201. They're going to record at 1080p, but the secondary recording will be at 512. MPEG-4 is not being requested, and there is no live stream. Okay. Yet, if they dial into 6134, they would be doing a standard definition call at 512 with a 256 backup, and they would re they have requested an MPEG-4 recording and live stream. So you can set these parameters up, use them whatever way you want. I happen to be using my template uh, and VRR, which uh, my VRR was number 6,000 in this situation. Uh, you can set up multiple streams. Okay, so that you can have multiple people watching at a high bandwidth or a low bandwidth. You can also have them watching from different types of devices. Maybe some are watching from an Office PC, Microsoft Office uh, solution, or they might also be watching from any of the, the Android or iPhone type devices that are out there. In this case, an iPhone watching MPEG-4. You also have the ability to control who's allowed to access these recordings. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, based on a pin or based on a group, now where does the group come from? Well, that group would probably come from Active Directory. We can control who's allowed to see what videos. Okay, uh, very easy to access a recording. This is also a very interesting feature. I can use the same video conferencing system to dial back into the RSS and allow me to watch one of my previously recorded sessions using the video conferencing system rather than a PC or an Apple solution. Very handy. Uh, you may require a pin for security purposes, uh, but it allows you to watch it in the original quality. So that can be very handy for folks to, uh, to see. Thank you for your time. I hope this information will help you uh, use an RSS 4000 in your network, be able to provide on-demand video and recorded video to your customer and clientele.